Today is a great day for the open source community. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are talking about a new technical blog from NVIDIA Developer Program. This is in their news, NVIDIA releases open source GPU kernel modules. Now to get right off this, you may have already heard about them supposedly releasing their drivers to open source completely. That is not necessarily true, however, we're going to go ahead and read in. This is for their GPU kernel modules, but not the entirety of all of their drivers. So, with that little notice out of the way, let's get into it. So, NVIDIA is supposedly going to be publishing uh, Linux GPU kernel modules as an open source with a dual GPL and MIT licensing. This is starting off with the R515 driver release. You can find all of these on the on their kernel module repository on GitHub. This release is a significant step forward, improving the experience of using NVIDIA GPUs on Linux. As we've known for a long time, NVIDIA drivers have been decent on Linux, but they have not been the best that they could be. However, NVIDIA does make the best graphics cards, and the fact that AMD and um, Intel have released their driver source for Linux means that NVIDIA is just out in the back not doing anything, but now they're finally making a push for it. Canonical and SUSE are able to immediately package the open source kernel modules with Ubuntu and SUSE Linux enterprise distributions. This is for tighter integration to their operating systems and for developers to debug, integrate, and contribute back to NVIDIA. As it says right here, developers can trace into code paths and see how kernel event scheduling is interacting with their workloads for faster root cause debugging. In addition, enterprise software developers can now integrate the driver seamlessly into their customized Linux kernel configured for their projects. So, this will further help improve NVIDIA GPU driver quality and security with input and reviews from the Linux end user community. That is a quote for directly from this blog, and that is true. As we have seen with open source, while it is easier to hack because of the simple fact that the source code is just right out there and that's it, this also means that it's easier to patch, and since there's more people alone, just normal people, looking for the problems to fix them than there are people looking for the problems to exploit them. Stacking on top of that, you've got a lot of companies, including even Microsoft, IBM with Red Hat, Canonical, Intel, AMD, all looking at the actual kernel and patching it, as well as many other companies and foundations working to patch root causes and problems. This all comes together very nicely, which definitely brings to another problem with Windows and the Mac OS. The fact that when there's a problem, it takes a long time for it to be patched. In fact, there's been problems with Windows since 1997, or at least they were found in 1997. But that's for a different video. Right here, they have their supported functionality area. The first release of the Open GPU kernel modules is... R515, along with the source code, fully built and packaged versions of the drivers are provided, however. For data center GPUs in the NVIDIA Turing and NVIDIA Ampere architecture families, this code is produced is production ready. My apologies. This was made possibly possible by the phased rollout of the GSP driver architecture over the past year, designed to make the transition easy for NVIDIA customers. We focused on testing across a wide variety of workloads to ensure feature and performance parity with the proprietary kernel mode driver. This is generally to make sure that the proprietary um, drivers and their setups are no longer obsolete, or at least if I'm reading it properly. In the future, functionality such as HMM will be, foundational, will be a foundational component for the confidential computing on the NVIDIA Hopper architecture. That is for a different video. It also says here, in this open source release, support for GeForce and Workstation GPUs is alpha quality. 
GeForce and Workstation users can use this driver on Turing and NVIDIA Ampere architecture GPUs to run Linux desktops and use features such as multi-display, multiple display G-Sync, and NVIDIA RTX ray tracing in Vulkan, and NVIDIA Optics. Now this is really good. Um, while you can ray trace on AMD GPUs, they are in their first generation now. And ray tracing on Linux has been really good, to be honest. But of course, without full proper plan support in the driver, it can be a little bit lackluster even compared to Windows, despite the fact that generally you will get better performance in Linux than on Windows, this is a concern. And thankfully, under Vulkan, they are looking at this. Now, this is an installation opt-in, all right? The R515 release contains pre-compiled versions of both the closed source drivers and the open source, open source kernel modules. These versions are mutually exclusive and the user can make the choice to, ins to install any time. And also can make the choices of which one at install time. The default options ensure that silent installs will pick the optimal path for NVIDIA Volta and, uh, and under the older GPUs versus Turing plus GPUs. Users can build kernel modules from the source code and install them with the relevant relevant, I can't speak today, I apologize, I should probably redo this video. Users can build kernel modules from the source code and install them with the relevant user mode drivers. Let's open this in a new tab. So as we can see, this is the installation starter. Right here you have the R515 driver package. Starting here, you can choose between the closed source modules, which has its um, link system right here, default installation command, but you can also choose the opt install command as well. These are different commands here. For the open GPU kernel modules, the Turing plus GPUs. It's nice to see. The partner ecosystem that they hold though. NVIDIA has been working with Canonical, Red Hat, and SUSE for better packaging, deployment, and support models for our mutual customers. In the coming months, the NVIDIA OpenGPU kernel modules will make their way into recently launched canonical Ubuntu 22.04 long-term long -term support versions. We are seeing here a quote from a, from a canonical source. And we can also get two quotes from one from SUSE and one from Red Hat. Now, the upstream approach, NVIDIA GPU drivers have been designed over the years to share code across operating systems, GPUs and Jetson SOCs, meaning, meaning system on a chip, so that we can provide a consistent experience across all our supported platforms. The current code base does not conform to the Linux kernel design conventions and is not a candidate for Linux upstream. That may be a problem, but that can be fixed as drivers entirely, even GeForce drivers, may become fully open source. And I'll get onto that in a minute. In the meantime, publish, publish source code servers as a reference to help improve Nouveau, dri Nouveau drivers. Nouveau can leverage the same firmware used by the NVIDIA driver, exposing many GPU functionalities such as clock management, management and thermal management, bringing new features to the entry Nouveau driver. Now, Nouveau is the open source NVIDIA driver. It usually does not, well, entirely does not perform anywhere near as good as the proprietary driver. If you've ever attempted to game on the Nouveau driver, then you know what this is like. It is absolutely horrible. However, this is really good for actually to be completely honest all community-based open source drivers because now we can do the same thing that has been going on with amd for a very long time there are also many questions here and funny comments let's go on to gamingonlinux.com well 
Liam Da has made a new post, and I will be posting links to both of these in the description below. So you can go ahead and check them out if you want to. I'm giving a general overview. This release is a significant step forward towards improving and the ex improving the experience of using NVIDIA GPUs in Linux for tighter integrations with the operating system and for developers to debug. This is another quote that we mentioned earlier from NVIDIA. NVIDIA says that with each new driver release, they will be publishing the source mention mentioned on GitHub, and they will be accepting contributions from the community and other developers. This is generally really good for the open source community. For a very, very long time, we have been trying to tell NVIDIA, we want open source drivers. However, they've never provided that. Now, what may have caused this? We have to talk about that. So, right off the bat, we all probably know about the, um, about the, what's considered the NVIDIA driver hack, where confidential, confidential information being all the drivers ever released for all graphics cards that was, a, that was still available was leaked. And while the reason behind it makes sense and I do understand it, going about it this way, not only is it completely wrong, but it also makes the open source community look absolutely horrible. It makes us look like spoiled brats who need to just have something handed to us, which is not the image we should be posting. And after the driver hack, this just makes things look even worse. Whether or not this is a this is caused simply by the driver hack is to be determined. I for one do not think so. However, I do believe that the driver hack does indeed post a point behind this. It may be one of the very few reasons of why this has happened, but the fact that it could be reason at all is still a problem. We've always wanted open source drivers. They're giving us kernel modules for GPU drivers. However, that is not 100% completed. So, of course, we're still in a similar boat to how we were before. However, with this being released, this also means that we very well may be getting full open source drivers in later versions. Now, this is really great because unfortunately, the NVIDIA Vulkan support extends as far down as the Pascal architecture or the Kepler. In fact, I'll talk to you while I'm looking that up, just to be safe. So, either way, the NVIDIA hack was not great at all. Again, it makes it look like spoiled brats, but unfortunately, it happened. So, we can't really do anything about it now, it's already done. However, there is a, another concern. Oh. I'm sorry, the lowest that it supports is the Maxwell architecture. My apologies, I was incorrect about that. It's always good to be informed. I'll also be posting this link in the description below. So, as we know, with this being released, this also means that we could bring Vulkan support to older cards. For example, with AMD's drivers being open source, such as cards like the HD 7870, which are, which are still powerhouses to this day, at least for what they are. There's actually a driver out there, a community driver, that was made that really does breathe more life into the HD 7870. And actually generally performs better than the official driver does, at least in games like Halo Infinite and Doom Eternal. So, this is generally great for people with older architectures, older GPUs completely, and also for GPUs as they continue on. 
Because me on my 1070 Pascal card, my card will stop receiving drivers eventually. But if I do not seek the wishes to upgrade, I will be left out of the loop. But having driver support through the community is always great. Being able to upgrade to what I need to upgrade to and optimizing what I need to optimize is also very, very intriguing and very, very useful. So, with that out of the way, one more thing I have to mention. As we continue growing, this is what we need more of. Not just the Linux community, especially the Linux community, yes, but the open source community in general. Open source is always a good thing depending on what it is. And in this case, we always see that in closed source operating systems when the code is reverse engineered, exploits are found. And those exploits can go on for a very long time. For example, in Microsoft Windows, there is the NSA key, which is a major, major issue for Microsoft Windows. It has been around since the, well, we don't even know. I, I do not know how long it's been around, but it was found in 1997 under Windows NT Workstation 4.0 which was obviously an issue, and it is still in there to this day in the latest versions of the NT kernel in Microsoft Windows. When you introduce backdoors, you introduce exploits. Simple as that. When you introduce anything, you introduce exploits, especially backdoors. However, I do understand the reason for having these backdoors, but what's better? You catch a few pedos in one way, rather than all the other ways, versus multiple enterprises and multiple millions of basic users being compromised. Because once you install Microsoft Windows, okay, an operating system with a backdoor in it, that's it. You have compromised your system, and that's all there is to it. There's no going back, unless you wipe it and install something like Linux, for example. So that is what we were met with. This is very much one of the best things that can happen. And while it can get better, no doubt that it will get better. So, um, that's about it. I'll be doing a video soon as this release on Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. I'll be doing a video later on this day about OpenSUSE. So, if you're watching this around that time, stay tuned. And catch you next one. Have a good rest of your day.